Yo guys, we've done cage by cage tours with the whole reptile zoo before. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I wanna go kind of cage by cage, but I also wanna talk about what each of those animals mean to me more than ever, right? Let's of course start with Ivy here. You know, she's in shed right now, so I can't take her off. But you guys know how much Ivy means to me. I mean, she is one of the most incredible animals I've ever owned. I always say that she's my favorite snake I've ever owned in my entire life. All my anacondas, Ariana, Verde, of course Ivy. There's just something special about Ivy that just makes it so amazing. And of course, you know, we're getting ready for a bunch of events today, so Connie's working we're just going to keep on going you know helen is an interesting animal to me because she kind of gave me that hope thing right you know and right now that's what i need is a lot of hope when she was born without eyes we didn't know if she would make it and we actually assist fed her for like six months before she started taking food on her own and now she's thriving like you can't believe and again she's that animal here at the reptarium that really bridges the gap right when people come in and are a little bit afraid of things they oftentimes will hold helen because she's cute she's small and of course because she doesn't have eyes people think she's not looking at them so she's not going to bite them or something like that so they feel safe so helen is definitely really, really important to me on so many different levels, it's not even funny. Every animal in this place is important in a different way to me, but there's just some that are like extra special. Obviously, we've got Tyson, the albino box turtle. He's absolutely incredible. This is another animal here, Flamin' Hot Cheeto, that just kind of changed a lot of things at the Reptarium. Again, you know, those ambassador animals that I think really change people's minds about animals, those are the animals that are really special. And you know, the fact that Flamin' Hot is so docile, you just throw him up on a kid's shoulder and he'll just hang out for as long as you absolutely want. You'll see kids come in and literally spend 10 or 15 minutes just with Flaming Hot Cheeto. So I think it's really cool. Now don't get me wrong, I mean obviously like Cherry Pop, the Aki Monitor, or El Toro, the Bull Snake, they're absolutely incredible too. I mean I'm not going to try to discount those. I'm just kind of pointing out the things that are kind of like really important to not me. Not only from a standpoint personally, of emotionally, but also you know what it does for our outreach with people, which is really what the Reptarium is all about. Obviously Baby Kush is an amazing animal. Now that's an animal that people aren't interacting with, but they look at him and he looks so raptor like that people are like wow a lot of people give him attention there's also the fact my friends Dez and Stephen Cush and of course my friend Forrest who passed away you know this was hit their animal and the fact that they donated it to the reptarium it's just really special to me of course we have Perdita I mean Perdita is an interesting animal right because she was bought specifically for the reptarium and I think that makes it super special right when I got her I thought of like this is an animal that's going to go into my reptile zoo you know this was before I actually had things getting built but we were already deciding it I mean she was just pure white with a dot or two of black on her and the fact that she's kind of grown into this absolutely beautiful animal and there's no doubt that when people come to the reptarium literally one of the animals they ask about every single time is can i hold Perdita?" and i don't think it's a bad thing because she is such an incredible animal she's so tame so docile and she is so absolutely beautiful i wasn't just having animals to have animals i was getting animals specifically for the reptarium and that was really cool speaking about an animal that is super cool and of course we got just for the reptarium i mean obviously i wouldn't have this animal if it wasn't for the reptarium is it my guy Drogo? Geez, it is just absolutely incredible. I mean, look at how beautiful that animal is. And you know, I've always loved sloths. I've always wanted to get a sloth. But there's just something so interesting about him. Now that we've had Drogo for over two, two and a half years, I couldn't imagine life without him, you know, and it brings so much joy to people. And that's, again, what it's all about here at the Reptarium, bringing joy to people. Having people go like, oh my God, this is just so amazing, you know, and having that amazing experience. Drogo is just another layer. And again, I think about that at the aquarium. It's like, how is that going to be when we add all kinds of new stuff you know it's gonna be cool now interestingly enough Al Macino is pretty interesting to me I actually had a friend of mine named Chad that actually was kind of just downsizing his collection he kept on like you know calling me up saying like hey you know I want to get rid of this As a matter of fact Sunfire was one of the first snakes I actually got from him I got a couple other reticulated pythons but the one snake that he wanted to keep was the Machino reticulated python Al Machino that was the snake I wanted I was like oh my gosh that's, that's the most beautiful snake he has and I understood that this was like the snake he was gonna keep but eventually he said you know hey you know what I think I'm gonna get rid of my last snake I remember meeting him in a parking lot right by the University of Michigan, ironically enough. And there was actually a Michigan game going on that day. So we're in a parking lot with a bunch of people. We're exchanging. It was just crazy. But regardless, Al is super cool. Salt and pepper. What can I possibly say about these guys? I mean, they're life changing. You know, I've always loved crocodilians. I think that when it comes to reptiles as a whole, crocodilians may be my favorite kind of facet of it. You know, I love snakes. Don't get me wrong. But there's something really amazing about crocodilians. And of course, when we got salt is a little tiny baby and pepper is a little tiny baby. It was so nerve wracking. You know, it was like, oh my God. Gosh, you know, I've got this like super expensive rare animal. I don't even know if I know what I'm doing. I've had, you know, RJ and a few other alligators, but this was like the next level. You know, salt has touched so many people's hearts because, you know, you can go and actually handle it. And of course, now we've got Freya that we're starting to do that with as well because salt is getting much bigger. And even though salt will go into a giant enclosure, it's going to be really cool to have people be able to still interact. With this is, of course, Sunfire. I was telling you about the guy, my buddy Chad, that gave me that animals right here. This is one of the first ones, and she is just getting better and better with age. There's no doubt about Diana it. Diana actually came from a good friend of mine who had 
raised her up for a year, year and a half. And he just needed to get rid of her because he didn't have enough room for her, right? And she just really came in and is just an amazing animal. Look at her bob her, bob her head. And that bobbing the head is literally her saying, pet me. You know, that's what she wants. She wants to get pet, but you know, if she doesn't come down, she doesn't realize that my arms aren't long enough. Go all the way here and she's like puffing up like, okay, pet me. You know, so that's the one thing, you know, although reptiles are super smart, I do find that Tiana and even the rhino iguanas often do that. Like you can't reach them, but they still are like, all right, why aren't you petting me? You know, it's really weird. But Tiana is amazing. All the Cyclera stuff is just absolutely ridiculous. And speaking of ridiculous, I mean, what's more ridiculous than my armadillo? You know what I mean? Brillo is just ridiculously cool. I love this guy so, so much. He's absolutely wonderful. Well, of course, he's a little bit of a cheeky monkey and he's a little bit, got a little bit of mischief. There's no doubt about I it. I said I didn't know that I needed an armadillo until I actually got an armadillo. And he is just absolutely incredible. I, think I fixed his cage recently. We're actually going to do this kind of enrichment thing with him and training that we're going to do in the next couple days where we're going to build a sand for him that he can do. So it's going to be really, really cool. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up. But yeah, we'll just let him run around. I'm going to clean this track out so this uh, glass actually shuts. Come on, Mr. Armadillo. Good boy. Sap and pop, the black-headed python. You know, it reminds me of my time in Australia. You know, I've been to Australia nine times. There's a whole bunch of collections I've visited that have had black-headed pythons, in particular the K Brothers down in Ipswich, Queensland. They had probably one of the coolest collections of blackheads in the world. So remind me of my time in Australia, which is just so special to me. I love them to death, and I love this enclosure. It's one of my favorite enclosures in the entire Reptarium because I love the way that the behavior of the black-headed python snap and pop are while they're in there. They're just super, super cool. Tabasco, the first animal that ever gave me stitches. Still a beautiful animal, still love him to death. Definitely have to be more careful with him now than ever. You know, because of my treatment, if I got bit like that again, it'd be way, way, way worse. Definitely have to be careful about him. We'll let the uh, the crew do more handling with Tabasco, and I have to be a little bit more careful with stuff like that. And that's one of the things that maybe you guys don't understand is that, you know, everything I do, I have to be a little bit more careful now because my immune system is gonna be down. If I get bit, I might have some infection and so like that. So I have to be a little bit more careful. But look at Jeffrey. I remember the first granite Burmese pythons that were coming into the country. A guy named Eric Kreider actually had them. And I was actually in Orlando at a reptile show and actually went to his room and he poured out a bag of six granite Burmese pythons that had just come in from Vietnam. They were the very first ones in the country. Of course, I didn't get them at that particular time, but I just loved them. Granite Burmese, you know, I love Burmese. He's a hypo granite Burmese, which I think is the prettiest of the granite. And now that he's getting some size to him, man, that animal is just absolutely stunning. But again, it kind of reminds me of those early days of Burmese pythons when the granites just first came in and thinking like, wow, hopefully one day I'll be able to have them. Then there's Cupcake, of course. Cupcake is my big Colombian boa constrictor, and it's just a giant snake. I mean, you know, I love boa constrictors. My second snake I ever bought as a reptile keeper was actually a boa constrictor. To have one that's this giant, it's just super, super cool. I mean, there's just something about a giant boa constrictor. Love it to death, for sure. There's no doubt about that. Turtle Pond is just cool, you know? I told you guys that I've been kind of a turtle nut this last little bit. I don't know. I just love coming over here, seeing the turtles swim around. Can't wait to get a bigger turtle pond across the street. 100 turtles or something like that in that pond. So it's going to be really, really cool. Giddy and Dixie. I mean, come on now. You know that Bella is my baby and she is actually was the first animal that we got for the reptarium, like I talked about Perdita, but actually Bella was the very first one. But look at these guys. I mean, they're incredible. And she is certainly looking plump. Look at how plump she's looking. She is gravid as can be. She's definitely going to have eggs here pretty soon. I tell you, Seclura, amazing. And my rhinos, man, I tell you, they are my babies. Hey, little buddy. Oba. I mean, what an amazing animal, a frill dragon. Again, I remember this animal when we first got it. It was uh, given to me because it was supposed to be mean. And the guy that had it was terrified of it. Went to his place and literally it was a puppy dog from the start, you know, and typically comes down. Of course, Lilith isn't in here right now. She's separated out. Probably gonna go back in here in the next probably week or two because she looks good. What happened was he just was trying to breed her too much and she was getting beat up. We had to separate him out. But he is a, an amazing thing. And now, of course, we have a bunch of frillies. They're all his offspring. And they're all absolutely incredible. So I tell you, they're freaking cool. I love them to death. This is kind of a new addition to the Reptarium. This is, of course, his son of Sam. What it is is Sam is actually a gigantic African bullfrog or pixie frog. And this was one of its babies here. So we called it Son of Sam. And I've always loved pixie frogs. It's always been a dream to have a giant pixie frog. I had a female that was pretty big for quite some time. But they don't get that big. You know, they get about maybe a quarter of the size of male. Males can literally get like this big. And this is a boy and he's growing up like crazy. So he's over here at the Reptarium now and he'll be over here for a long, long time. Of course, he'll probably go across the street. But we expect him to get giant. And there's nothing like pulling out 
a giant frog for a bunch of kids because they absolutely freak out. Again, Ben and Jerry. I mean, what can you say about Ben and Jerry? Absolutely wonderful animal. You guys know that it was a dream of mine to have a two-headed snake. And again, I talk about the fact, the emotion behind it, right? Not only is it emotional for me, but it's also that animal that I know brings so many people into the reptarium and so many people get converted into reptile lovers because of animals like Ben and Jerry. This animal is, uh, is invaluable to me. I mean, it's one of the coolest snakes I've ever had, or I should say snakes, because really they are two snakes with one body. Night Fury. What are you doing? Look at this snake right here. Whoa, whoa, it's okay. It's okay, Night Fury. You see that twitch is not what you want with a male. He's basically saying, hey, don't walk with me. Don't leave me alone. And again, I don't want to get bit by him. There's no doubt about that. So I'm going to be a little bit careful with him. But look at how beautiful that snake is right there. Wow, that thing is incredible. Although it might not be the most handleable snake and it's not the most reliable snake, it's still people come in and see that iridescence in it and absolutely blows it away. You know, it's funny, you know, I always love tegus. I've always been into them, but I've never owned one until we open up the reptarium. And now, of course, we have some blues, we have some albinos, and of course, we have the black and white Terrence that's here. The blue is going to go across the street with the albino. Right now, they're over at BHB, and we use them for educational animals when we go on zoo tours. I think Terrence will probably stay here at this reptarium, and then across the street, we'll probably use the other ones. And for you guys that are confused, I've already talked about, there will be this reptarium and that reptarium, but this reptarium will be only for private tours. So it's not going to be open to the public. I still want to have all our animals here. There'll be different animals, like some, like Terrence will stay here. Some animals will go across the street. The animals that go across the street and we have an empty enclosure, we're just going to replace with another animal. And that way, if someone wants to do a private event, they don't have to be there during open hours. Obviously, see beetle juice in the back there. It brings me back to my time in Australia, you know? Saw some Bell's Face lace monitors in the wild, never caught them. Lots of normal lace monitors, which is the, basically the normal ones, right? And then the Bell's have the white bands on them. It's a natural occurring thing. It's kind of like a co-dominant, incomplete dominant thing. Pretty darn cool. There's no doubt about that. We have our new albino Freya who's getting much better. She's still a little wiggly. And the more we work with her, the better she's gonna get. And she's gonna just continue to chill out. But it's a cool animal. Kids being able to come here, hold an albino alligator. It's just something that's really special. And that's the, the things that matter to me. And again, that's why I'm kind of doing this, is to talk about the things that are just kind of really important to me, make the biggest impact when I take out for kids and for other people. And of course, you know, a big lychee gecko is certainly one of them. I mean, whenever you take it out and you actually feel the feet, you know, it's just interesting. The feet have like this kind of grippy feel to them. This is very velvety, soft, almost like suede or something like that. You put this into someone's hand there, I mean, like, oh my gosh, did not expect it to feel this way. An animal that makes a lot of impact, not to mention, hey, it's a giant gecko. I mean, giant geckos are impressive. You know, and although Carl, the emerald tree boa, isn't going to come out and actually interact with people, it's still a, a really cool display animal. It's one of those things that people look at and, you know, it's iconic, right? Everyone has kind of seen a picture of an emerald tree boa. To see it here in person, it's just really cool. So again, Carl, to me, because I was really obsessed with emerald tree boas, is a really important animal to And then, use. of course, we have Danielle over here. This is the big blood python. I mean, she is just a beast. This is, again, a world record as far as size goes. Again, blood pythons are another animal. When I used to have that book, Living Snakes of the World, there were two pictures I looked at all the time. It was the baby red blood python and the emerald tree boa. Those were the two pictures I was obsessed with. So to have a really beautiful red, big, gigantic blood python, it's freaking awesome. Snaz is deep in shed right now. My friend Rhonda actually donated Snaz. So that was special because this is a, her, like, her baby, you know? And then secondly, my first snake I ever bought, of course, was a normal Burmese python. So having a normal Burmese python, special, right? I mean, it brings me back to my first snake. Of course, it was named Monty. You know, of course, Monty Python. Everyone had that back in the 70s and 80s whenever had, anyone had a python. They always named it Monty Python. My first snake was named Monty. And still to this day, I love Burmese python. Of course, we have chicken strip down here. The albino Nile monitor, the only albino in the world. And it's just really cool. One day, I've got to get a female and try to breed So him. we could potentially prove some other albinos. But for now, he's just, uh, he's just a beautiful animal. And he's getting a lot better, I'm not gonna lie. Pinocchio, the Baron's Racer. Now, I love Baron's Racers. I have a handful of them. But I tell you what, there's something really cool about this particular one. He loves to run around. He loves to interact with people. And actually, it was also a donation for my friend Lindsay, who actually bought him for me, which was pretty cool. As he gets bigger, he's going to get cooler and cooler. And the fact that he's super docile makes it really cool. It's just a really interesting animal, and I uh, love it to death. Again, what can I say about Joker? It's another one of those animals that creates a reaction. When someone touches this, it feels so different than they expect. They're like, oh my gosh, that doesn't even feel like a 
snake. What's the deal with that? I love the scale of stuff. You guys know I love the scale of stuff. Cool to, to have this on display. And Joker, he's just an amazing animal. He's so cool, so placid, so friendly. Look at my Sudan plated lizards. I mean, they're so curious, they're so interesting. They're just something else. I mean, I love these guys. Not exactly easy to handle. I mean, once you get them out, they're super, super docile. But getting them out is a little bit of a trick. I mean, they run like crazy. Probably but the most underrated lizard I've ever worked with, to be honest with you. They are literally miniature dinosaurs. And of course, there's Neo, the motley golden child pied reticulated python. When my friend Becky came to visit, she actually sponsored her for a month, fell in love with her. And I don't understand how anyone can't fall in love with that animal because it's amazing. And again, it's about what I talked about, the animals that are super super special to me right now that I'm talking about are animals that really create curiosity. You can make here in the background, we have a whole school group here right now. And as they're going to walk around, they're going to see animals like this and they're going to be blown away by it. And that's what I love. You know, all those kids, 20, 30 kids up front right now about to get educated about animals. And when our educator pulls out Neo, they're going to freak out because they're going to be like, oh my God, I've never seen a snake quite like that. And hopefully my hope is, is that they're going to go home tonight and they're going to talk to their parents about how cool it was to come to the reptarium and how awesome reptiles are. And that's how it all get started. Look at this snake right here. Again, night fury-ish with that iridescence. Again, one of the rarest pythons on the planet when it comes to actual just normal pythons without mutations. I mean, it's just an incredible animal. And as it's getting bigger, it's just getting better and better. Dream animal, I still all the time look at the snake and can't believe that I actually have it. I mean, this animal is literally life-changing, you know? I got him, he was about a year old and, uh, and he was just absolutely crazy. I mean, and he was actually really docile, but he still was a little bit tentative. So we had to work with him quite a bit. But now that he's been here, for a few years. This animal comes out all the time. It's like a little dinosaur. It's absolutely incredible. And again, you see the kids' reactions. They come up, they're like, oh my gosh, it's like a dinosaur. There's not a lot I can say about that that I haven't already talked about. I mean, she was the first animal that we got for the reptarium. Lori bought it for me. And uh, I remember the first night I had her, she literally slept under my pillow in a hotel room, bonded from that moment on. And she became so amazing to me. And I spent so many thousands of hours just playing with her over the years. And again, I always say, you know, I've said it a million times that Diddy and Dixie are like our dogs where you cut you take them out they want to come out she's more like a cat where sometimes she comes down sometimes she doesn't it depends on what she thinks but she always knows i'm here she always comes over look at she's looking at me like dad what's going on you know but if she wants to come down and say hi i'm happy to have her come down if not i'm happy to just look at her and know how special she is for me another giant prehistoric absolutely beautiful animal but again the fact that you can teach people about the fact that it smells like maple syrup it just it's one more layer of like getting people interested so i'll open up the door and say stick your head in here take a big whiff and you know kids and even adults so take a whiff and go, oh my gosh, it does smell like maple syrup. What is the deal with that? And you know, again, we don't really know. I don't know. We speculated that maybe the sweetness attracts like rodents or something like that. I don't really know what it is, but, but all black throat monitors have it. But that is a true giant. I mean, it's crazy. I've always loved black throat monitors. So I'm so happy that we have one. And he's so docile and so amazing. And then there's Toothless, another monitor. And the thing that's interesting about him is that this was the first monitor I got as a baby baby to raise up. It was only like seven or eight days old when we got it. Kevin McCurley over at New England Reptile actually produced it. And when he produced the clutch of eggs, I said, I want a black dragon. He literally wrote BHB on that egg. And when that egg hatched, that egg was mine. And that was Toothless. So Toothless is again, super docile, you know, even more so than Elvis, right? Because like I said, we got Elvis, he was a year and he was a little twitchy, a little bit afraid of people a little bit. Now he's almost perfect, but Toothless has never had that fear because day one, we worked with it constantly confident around people. It's just uh, amazing. And when we take it out, I mean, kids could do anything to it and it doesn't matter at all. It just like goes like, <laughs> I mean, it's just a, a cool, cool animal. Of course, my two-headed turtles are much like my two-headed snake, Ben and Jerry, right? It's about, you know, getting people to be like, what in the heck? You know, kids will come in here just like that are screaming in the background right now, all excited about reptiles. And they'll see and they'll be like, two-headed turtles! And they'll just freak out about it. And I just think it's super cool. So again, it's gonna be a really cool display for these guys across the street. Much bigger display kind of, you know, maybe even an opportunity for people to feed them and stuff like that, whereas this doesn't have that. You can only get to these from the back. We want to have a front opening cage so that people could actually maybe take them out more. We can uh, interact with them more because again, those are animals that really spark people's interest in reptiles. We brought Luna over when she was literally just a teeny tiny worm and she was eating little pinky mice. And it was just a great thing to come over because people were able to, you know, show their kids a small snake instead of starting with something bigger. Now that she's getting a little bit bigger, she's still small enough where it's super cool. And because she's been around people her entire life and continue to be handled constantly, she is one of the most docile king snakes I've ever had. I mean, she doesn't pee on you, she doesn't poop on you, she doesn't ever try to bite. Luna has changed a lot of people's minds about reptiles and I love her to death. Then of course we have some of our giant snakes and giant snakes are just, you know, they're just one of those things that no matter you know, what you pull out, they're still gonna be nothing more impressive than 
pulling out a big snake. And then of course we have Sunrise, my albino Burmese python. You call her giant. You know, she's a big snake. I mean, to most people, she's a giant, but to us, she's still kind of on the, I don't want to say small side, but she's going to get twice the size eventually. Russian food, she's doing really well. It's really amazing. And again, those big snakes are just things that people absolutely freak out about. That's why Gemma has been such an important addition as well, you know, because she's a bigger snake, even bigger than Sunrise. And we could pull her out dead right now, but we can pull her out and she's absolutely incredible. And then there's one layer up from there. Again, we had Lucy that was giant, but you couldn't pull Lucy out, right? Now we have Juliet that you can actually pull out and people can interact with, which is really amazing. And again, just, you know, you bring out a snake like that, I don't care who is around, they are freaked out because it's one of the biggest snakes they're ever gonna see in their entire life. To be able to interact and know that she's super docile, she's been an unbelievable great addition and I'm so blessed that we have her. Then of course we've got our tortoises, we've got Matilda, a dinosaur, right? You let Matilda walk around this place like we do sometimes when we're open and kids and, and even adults freak out about it because you just got this big gigantic, you know, close to 200 pound tortoise that's one day gonna be four or 500 pounds. I mean, it's just so impressive and don't get me wrong, I think Big Mama and Steve are really cool too because they're smaller and kids aren't as intimidated by it so it's really cool. And then of course we have Bowser. You know, Bowser is just, you know, there's something about an alligator snapping turtle, especially when he's out with his mouth open. People love it. A lot of times they don't even think he's real, right? I mean, they're like, that's not real. And then I move him around, he's like, oh my God, it is real. It's a giant turtle, you know? It's only 115 pounds. One day could maybe get 200 pounds. So it's gonna get more and more impressive. He's gonna move over into a much larger enclosure across the street. So I can't wait to do that. So basically that is the rundown of the animals that are really special here for me at the Reptarium. Every animal is special, but I wanted to highlight the ones that really make a difference to me. I know are making a difference getting other people excited about reptiles. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.